In the near future, a German biotech firm named Aeon introduces a groundbreaking medical process. This procedure enables the transfer of lifespan from one individual to another, provided there's a biological compatibility between the two. Essentially, people can give away years of their own life, which are then added to the life of a matching recipient. This technological advancement allows individuals in desperate financial situations to exchange years of their lives for money. As a result, their physical aging accelerates in proportion to the number of years sold. Conversely, the individuals who purchase this time regain their youthful appearance, effectively granting the wealthy immortality. However, Eon always promotes it as a choice and a donation. The company ensures that scholars, artists, and celebrities are honored with time, and the Nobel winners have recently been added to the list. Ian's best donation manager is Max, who convinces people to sell their age. Today, he is conversing with a young man from a migrant family, explaining how selling 15 years of his life could significantly benefit him. To convince him, Max explains how he sold five years of his life to afford a college education. He also points out that the chances of his family finally getting the legal paperwork to live in peace are almost zero. Still, this money could help them open a business. All this manipulation gets Max the deal. When he returns to the company building, Max puts on a raincoat to deal with the protesters outside, who throw things at any worker who passes by. Numerous individuals oppose the technology developed by Aeon as it exacerbates social and economic inequalities. Meanwhile, during a visit to the facility, Max is part of a unique event where he is honored with the distinction of being the top agent of the year. Subsequently, Sophie Thyssen, the company's founder, delivers a significant speech highlighting the crucial nature of their organization's endeavors. Meanwhile, in one of Ian's clinics, patients are having a calm day when suddenly, a man dressed as an employee pulls out a gun and shoots a bunch of people in the room before graffitiing the wall with an symbol and then running off. He's from the Adam Group, which is meant to be an anti Ian organization. Later, Sophie and her guards, Kaya and Noak, are watching a video sent by Adam's leader, Lilith, who promises more chaos is coming. Max returns home and prepares a special dinner with his wife, Elena, to celebrate his award. They still need to finish paying for the apartment. Still, they dream of having kids, so they get enthusiastic before eating. The following day, the couple pays a visit to Elena's parents. During the visit, her father humorously suggests purchasing additional years for his life. Still, he's very clearly being passive-aggressive and showing disdain for Max's job, which he considers unethical. Elena interrupts before an argument escalates, but Max wishes she would defend him during the ride home, instead of being annoyingly neutral. Upon arriving back at their building, the couple is stunned to find their apartment engulfed in flames. They lost all their belongings and money too because it was at home. When they see the insurance company, they discover they won't cover this incident, because reports indicate a candle started the fire, which is seen as negligence. Elena is adamant that she will permanently extinguish the candles before exciting the room. However, according to the official report, more needs to be done. To make matters worse, Max learns that to get the loan from the bank, Elena offered 40 years of her life as collateral, which she never told him. Max tries to provide his years instead, but he's turned down because there aren't compatible recipients. When they leave the insurance company, the cops arrest Elena to prevent her from fleeing the country. Max swears he'll get the money to pay the bank in some other way and goes to see Sophie to explain his situation, getting Sophie to promise she'll see what she can do. Subsequently, Sophie convenes with the company's investors, who express frustration over the extensive resources spent on DNA compatibility checks. This process limits the opportunity for individuals to purchase additional years as finding a genetic match is exceedingly rare. They call Sophie too biased. A few days later, Max's lawyer informs him there has been no news from Sophie and that she's ignoring their calls. Left with no alternative, Max heads to the clinic, intent on seeing Elena. However, he is informed that he must wait until her procedure concludes. Overwhelmed with distress, Max frantically rushes through various rooms to find his wife. During this desperate search, Kaya and her team intercept and physically restrain him. Meanwhile, Elena is prepared for the procedure. Hearing a lawyer read the contract makes her finally snap. She begins struggling against the doctors, 
but she's given an injection that puts her to sleep. Then she's connected to a machine that transfers 38 years to a person whose face is hidden in another room. Afterward, Max takes Elena home, but she doesn't say a word. During the following days, Elena's body ages quickly until she looks like an older adult, and she can barely stand looking at herself in the mirror. Max and Elena's relationship deteriorates, becoming strained and uncomfortable. Despite Max offering comfort and support, Elena grows increasingly aloof and detached. One morning, Max receives a summons to the company and discovers he's been promoted, accompanied by a pay increase that now seems pointless to him. Enraged, Max attempts to confront Sophie, but Kaya intervenes, preventing him from getting too near. Sophie ignores him and gets in her car, although Max notices she's starting to look younger. Later at home, Max is affectionate to Elena, swearing he still loves her. Still, Elena thinks it's a pity and tells him to leave her alone. After Max leaves, Elena begins feeling a strange pain in her abdomen and rushes to the bathtub, where she starts bleeding. Meanwhile, Max goes for a walk and to have a beer at the park, where he's approached by a girl selling illegal uppers. Max quickly tells her off. A few hours later, Elena is in the hospital for her pain. Max is keeping her company and is shocked to learn that before the procedure, Elena had been pregnant and today's bleeding had been a miscarriage because this old body can't have babies. Tired of their awkward life, Elena makes Max take her to her parents' house, where she'll live from now on. Heartbroken, Max promises to find a way to reverse the procedure. Still, Elena's father tells him off, reminding him this is the system he helped to create. In his urgent quest for answers, Max encounters the girl in the park and confronts her for details. He's aware that her procedure must have originated from an illicit source, as Ian's policies strictly prohibit conducting such procedures on children. The girl gets him a particular contact that Max later calls, and he learns of an underground group that has been performing age transplant surgeries in the neighboring country of Lithuania. He's told to pick up a burner phone and fake passports in a shady neighborhood, and to get hold of the recipient who has been given Elena's time. Afterward, Max hides in a hotel, and makes plans to kidnap Sophie, because he's sure her getting younger, and refusing to help him isn't a coincidence, for the next few days he follows Sophie around until one afternoon, when he finds his chance when he sees her alone in a cemetery with no guards in sight. Concealing his identity, he nears the rejuvenated Sophie. She starts to scream for assistance and flees. Max rapidly pursues and incapacitates her with a taser, causing her to lose consciousness. Afterward, he marks a grave with the letter A, creating the illusion that the Adam group perpetrated the after that, Max picks Elena up at her workplace, asking her to trust him. Together, they go to the abandoned building where he's keeping an illegal van, and Sophie is tied up. Still, Elena thinks this is crazy, and an argument ensues. Max convinces her to come along when he mentions this is the only chance to rebuild their lives and have a family. At the cemetery, Kaya and Nowak investigate the situation and Noak uses the footage from security cameras to trace the car Max used. Everything was bought with a fake account, but Noak follows all the purchases until he traces the first one to Max's real account, so now they'll be looking for him. Noak wonders if they should call the cops, but Kaya refuses. The couple is already gone when they make it to the abandoned building. While Elena and Max make their way to the harbor, Kaya and Noak prepare a new operation to catch them, this time with the help of the police. Noak explains how the couple met. Max had been assigned to Lena as her donation manager, but in the course of making the sale, they fell in love and got married. Noak admits he feels terrible for desperate people. Still, Kaya calls him out and reveals she's 64 years old. She doesn't like modifying her body like this, but she does it for the job because she owes Sophie a lot. Max and Elena manage to get on a ship at the harbor without much trouble. Still, they're caught on a security camera, and Noak gets their location. Regularly, Max visits Sophie, ensuring she has meals and beverages. Sophie is concealed in a crate equipped with a bathtub, masquerading as cargo. In the evenings, the duo observes a joyful family from their hideout, nurturing dreams of having their child someday. Suddenly, a child mentions some funny lights at the shore, and Max and Elena come out to discover the police are waiting for them in Lithuania. Thinking fast, Max decides to use the family to their advantage. 
As the police examine each vehicle departing the ship, they encounter Max's van, driven not by Max but by a family man coerced into acting under his threat. Feigning the role of a delivery man with a bathtub in tow, his conspicuous nervousness raises the officer's suspicions, casting doubt on his cover story. They ask to see the back of the van, where Sophie and Elena hide in the bathtub. The cops look at the box and demand the man to open it thoroughly, and when the poor guy hesitates, they ask him why he's so nervous. Through a Bluetooth earbud connected to his phone, Max tells the guy to say that he's worried because he's never been held at gunpoint before. The operation leader notices his officer isn't handling his weapon well and lets the driver go to avoid being called out for misconduct. Both vehicles stop by the road later, and the family reunites, but before letting them go, Max destroys their phones and shoots one of their car's tires. Elena feels guilty seeing the baby cry. Then, the couple leaves in the van with Sophie still tied in the bathtub. A few hours later, they stop in the middle of the road so Sophie can empty her pee bucket, but now that she can talk, she explains she isn't Sophie, she's her daughter, Marie. They happen to look a lot alike now that her mother went through the procedure. Max doesn't believe her and searches the information on the internet, which says Sophie only had one daughter who died ages ago and whose grave she was visiting in the cemetery. Marie explains that she was kept out of the spotlight to avoid press attention, but Max doesn't believe her and takes her back to the tub. However, Elena is starting to have doubts. Eventually, they find an abandoned hotel and spend the night there. Marie is allowed to be out and insists she isn't Sophie, explaining she hates her mother's work because it's unethical and that she's on the couple's side. Elena begins arguing with Max, who still doesn't believe her. He points out that even if the story is true, Marie should still be a match for Elena because it's the same DNA as her mother. Elena is horrified by Max wanting to use a child and leaves the room. Marie asks for a shower, so Max takes her to the bathroom. While Marie explains that Sophie had invented the age transplant method while trying to cure her sister, Max turns around so she can change. Marie takes this chance to hit him and run away. Marie immediately runs to the woods where it's dark and there's no signal for the phone she stole. She notices a light nearby, meaning she's being chased, so she hurries up. But when she's about to cross what she thinks is a big puddle, it turns out to be a deep hole and she begins sinking. Marie tries to grab onto a fallen tree and has no choice but to yell for help. Luckily, the light turns out to be Elena, who quickly helps her get out. The women return to the hotel, and Marie can finally shower. When she removes her clothes, Elena notices that she doesn't have the scars from the procedure, meaning she truly is Marie. Elena tells Max of this, but he explains the skin probably regenerated during the process and reminds Elena that he's doing this so they can have a baby. He tells Elena she deserves better and kisses her, escalating into getting frisky. At the same time, a tied-up Marie can hear them from the tub. Meanwhile, Noak tells Kaya that he's found the couple's location and they get ready to go after them. A few hours later, Elena and Max are suddenly awakened by a few men pointing guns at them. The Adam group takes Max's gun away before Lilith reveals herself. She confirmed the girl was Marie and not Sophie. Then she takes the trio to an abandoned building where she reveals the whole truth. Sophie had been looking for an age donor for her personal use, and that person happened to be Elena? The company had sent Max because he was their best donation manager. Still, instead of making Elena donate, the two fell in love with each other and eventually got married. When Sophie needed the donation, she burned down their apartment on purpose and had Max's match killed to prevent him from donating some of his years. When Max accuses Lilith of being a murderer, Lilith gives Elena a gun with only one bullet, telling her to kill Marie or end things for herself. Elena doesn't dare to do either and drops the gun, causing Lilith to point out everyone is a pacifist when they're forced to take lives themselves. Still, they have no problem allowing doctors to do the same on their behalf. At that moment, Max's burner phone receives the location of the illegal clinic, valid for six hours. If they don't want to miss the appointment, the couple must help Lilith kill Sophie. Max emerges when Kaya surrounds the building with her team, pretending Adam isn't with them. He tells the team that only Sophie is allowed inside and that Elena will shoot Marie if anyone else tries to enter the building. 
A young-looking Sophie shows up and accepts the terms, but before she can enter, Kaya wonders how Max knew Sophie was with them. She realizes this is a trap, and suddenly, Noak takes out his gun and shoots Sophie, knocking her out. Kaya immediately kills Noak, and from inside the building, the Adam group opens fire against Sophie's team. Max rushes back into the hotel, only to fall when something explodes near him. After dodging a few guards, he's grabbed by a rebel, but after exchanging a few hits, he manages to knock him out. Then Max grabs Elena and Marie and drags them to the garage to escape. While Max tries to start the car, Murray reveals she took a gun and tries to shoot Elena, but it has no bullets. Elena is disappointed that Marie would kill her after she refused to shoot her. Hence, she grabs Marie and hits her head against the car until she falls unconscious. Then, the trio escapes in the car. At the same time, Kaya checks Noak's phone and discovers he's been in contact with the Riddles because he's been part of the Adam group all along. A few hours later, Max confesses he doesn't want to do anything to Marie because he doesn't want to become like Lilith. However, Elena has had enough and kicks Max out of the car by threatening to end things for herself. After Max leaves, Elena drives to the illegal clinic where Marie is dragged against her will and the procedure gets done. Meanwhile, Max wanders around and when he sees a bus full of immigrants, he follows it to join a refugee camp. The next morning, Murray is found walking down the road by a trucker, who takes her back to the city. Moments later, she reunited with Sophie, who is alive and well, because she had been wearing a bulletproof vest. Then Kaya announces she quits because she's tired of killing people just for business. During the following days, Murray starts to age rapidly. Yet, a selfish Sophie refuses to donate some of her years to her daughter, promising to find a donor soon. A few months later, Max finds Elena at the beach. She looks young and pregnant and has a new husband to care for her. When she sees Max, she doesn't even try to talk to him, and Max goes back to his new life, being a riddle with the Adam group, determined to bring Sophie down.